Your brain is like a computer. It's like the central processing unit for your body, your mind, emotions, everything basically we are and do. And just like a computer, sometimes we need to change the programming to get the results we're looking for. Well, my guest today is John Hargrave, and we're going to recap our conversations over the last few episodes on how to hack our minds to get better results in every area of our lives. Stay tuned. Some really good content is ahead today on the One Simple Thing podcast. It's time to build a better business by building a better you. This is One Simple Thing. Welcome to the show. It's Dave Kirby with you, and uh, I am really excited to uh, share some uh, good thoughts today from Sir John Hargrave. He has been our guest on the last few episodes of the program. His book is called Mind Hacking, How to Change Your Mind for Good in 21 Days. Uh, John is a, a computer uh, geek, and uh, along the way, he has realized that uh, just like a computer, uh, we're able to hack into our brains, into our minds, and kind of shift the programming around so we get different results, better results from what we're looking for in our lives. So again, the book is called Mind Hacking. We have a, a link to the book. If you'd like to pick up your copy, just go to onesimpletheonline.com. There's a banner ad on the right-hand side of the page for Sir John Hargrave. Click on it, and off you'll go to amazon.com. Let's get started on episode 371. You know, it's a buzzword these days, mindfulness. It means to be able to be fully present in the moment, the ability to focus and filter out distractions. Here's the problem. It doesn't come naturally. It takes practice. And often when we are attempting to meditate or really sit down and, and practice focusing, we find that our minds wander and then we get all mad at ourselves because I can't concentrate or whatever. So on episode 371, John had an interesting perspective and also a technique to help us overcome that process of trying and beating ourselves up. This was a big part of my personal journey was I... Uh, tried to learn meditation and I found meditation was very difficult like most people. Uh, and yet all of the scientific benefits we know from multiple research studies, it makes you uh, healthier. It makes your relationships better. It obviously makes you calmer and more focused. So I developed this technique. I call it Jedi concentration training where you basically spend 15 or 20 minutes in the morning. And what you do is you try to stay, keep your concentration focused on your breath so um, when you notice your mind wandering, uh, when you notice yourself kind of lost in thought, when you forget to focus on your breath, you award yourself a point. We call it awareness points. And what it does is in meditation, usually you feel bad that you've kind of lost your focus and, uh, and you kind of berate yourself. But when you sort of flip it on its head and you make a game out of it, then you reward yourself and you kind of get a dopamine hit whenever you realize, oh, my mind's wandering, uh, and you return your attention back to the breath. So it's that simple. You stay focused on the breath. When you get distracted, you give yourself a point and you focus it back on the breath again. And this is super effective at helping you develop a regular mindfulness or meditation or concentration practice, especially if you write down your score each day and try to beat your high score. I really like the idea of kind of gamifying uh, our ability to focus, right? So every time you don't focus, every time you – so the goal really is more than just focusing. The goal becomes catching ourselves not focusing and then gently moving ourselves back into it, right? So we get over this expectation that we're going to be perfect, understand that we're not perfect at it, and actually reward ourselves when we recognize that and uh, put the focus back where it belongs. I think that's a great idea. On episode 372, we talked about eliminating or at least reducing distractions. And I talked to John about how I see two types of distractions in my life. There's the external ones like phone calls or texts or people stopping in and asking me questions or whatever. But the one I really struggle with is what I call the internal distractions, right? They're ones caused by me. I end up killing time or sitting on Facebook instead of getting things done. And John said that's a very common problem, and he had a suggestion for how to deal with those internal distractions. I know that feeling of I should be working on this big report, but it's so difficult and it's going to take so much energy that it's easier for me to just go surf the web or check my email for a few minutes. And the mind hack or technique I found that's helpful um, is two things. First is in the morning, uh, you, you make a list. I call it the three-mit list, three most important things, three-mit. 
and you just say, what are the three things I got to get done today to really move the needle? And you make that list and then you get started on one of them right away. You don't start on the low value work like email and stuff like that that just keeps you busy. But you tackle it while you're fresh, one of those things right away. And the second hack that I've used in court in conjunction with that, at the end of the day, you then look back on the day and say, what did I do today that actually like moved the ball forward? Did I do anything that's really going to have a lasting impact? When I started doing this, Dave, I was I was surprised to find that a lot of times the answer was no. Like yeah. I was super busy, but I actually didn't do anything today that really will have a lasting make a lasting difference. But once I started pairing those two hacks at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, I found my productivity went up drastically. Was it Peter Drucker who said you can't manage what you can't measure? And I think what uh, John is giving us uh, the tool here to do is to measure uh, how we're doing, you know, start off the day saying, this is what I want to do. Uh, end the day saying, here's what I did. How do those two compare? And we begin to measure our results and it helps us to manage those results better. You know, we're all talking to ourselves all the time. Now, not like the scary guy walking down the street, talking to himself, but internally we're having conversations with ourselves about who we are, who we're not, what we believe about ourselves. John calls those loops, and it's hard to break out of those loops, especially when they're negative or limiting kind of loops. He shared on episode 373 how we can replace them with new, more empowering loops. Yeah, well, loops are really at the foundation of programming, and they're at the foundation of, of how we process the world. Uh, and loops can be, you know, either positive or negative. We can think to ourselves, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a successful entrepreneur, or we can think to ourselves, like everything I do ends in failure. We can think to ourselves, uh, I'm successful at relationships, or we can think, uh, you know, my parents got divorced, and I probably will too. And so we have these loops, these ongoing habitual thoughts that we tell ourselves. And usually, they're just below the level of conscious awareness. They're kind of embedded in our operating system, if you will. And what we do in mind hacking is we try to develop the, the, the awareness of those loops. We try to actually pinpoint them and put them into words so that we can then find the ones that are causing us pain, the ones that are not getting us to where we want to go. And then we reprogram those with their more positive equivalents. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. So it, these loops... I would think they're kind of formed over a lifetime, right? So my mind is kind of replaying certain failures over and over again, and they kind of program me to expect that that's going to happen to me in the future. Totally. Yeah. So an example is I, I used to uh, uh, have this loop that I was no good with people. And when I would be talking with somebody, I'd be like really self-conscious and sort of just thinking like, am I standing up straight? Um, is there a piece of kale in my teeth? And at one, some point, I became aware of that loop, and I realized, like, I don't have to think this way. And so I developed this new loop, which was basically, I'm good with people. That's is that simple. And then when I started talking with people over the next few months and years, I would just re recite that loop to myself. I'm good with people. And, you know, over a series of, of you know, hundreds and thousands of, of repetitions of that of that simple loop, I'm good with people. I really am now kind of good with people. So there's a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy uh, that, that happens with these mental loops we tell ourselves. Here's always the problem I've had with uh, replacing beliefs is that at the beginning when you start saying that new belief that you want to appropriate for yourself, it seems so disingenuous, doesn't it? When I'm saying something that I just totally don't believe about myself, it just seems like I'm lying to myself or I'm trying to fake myself out. And in a certain way, you are, I guess, right? Uh, at the beginning of anything, you know, if I start exercising after having not exercised for a long time, I'm trying to convince myself that I'm the kind of person who exercises. And I don't believe that about myself, but I practice it day in, day out, and I begin to change who I uh, believe that I am. Uh, so we can all do that. And just real briefly before we move on, I want to remind you that we have a free PDF on the website called Belief Replacement Therapy. And uh, hearing John talk about these loops, uh, what we've done is identified some common uh, negative beliefs about ourselves and then offered up a, a suggested positive belief 
uh, that we can begin using to interrupt those old loops and create new ones. So you can get that on the website at onesimpletheonline.com. So what are your dreams for your life? Have you even thought about them? Maybe you have some nebulous idea about what you want, but you've never really stopped to sit down and identify and really focus on what the those ideas are. On episode 374, John uh, kind of explained the importance of why we have to know where we're going in order to get there and how we can dream and identify what those goals might look like. Everybody can tell you what they don't want, right? Right. Like we all know that. But what you actually want is kind of difficult to really articulate that. But there's a ton of research that shows that when you are able to write down what you want, you are much more likely to achieve it. And we've got a lot of these studies in the book. But one of my favorite is um, this uh, this group of folks who were laid off from jobs. Uh, they actually split them into two groups. And one group, they said, you know, write about something uh, that kind of led up to you. Uh, <laughs> like being let go of your job. And the other group, they said, write about your best possible future. Just write about the best thing that could happen to you. And that second group who wrote down this 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 positive future, who, who articulated what they want, w- were not only hired faster, but they were also significantly happier and positive and more optimistic. And even their their spouses and partners noticed a positive change in them. And that was just from writing something down five or 10 minutes a day. So it's instead of looking backwards, it's about looking forward in our lives. That's right. It's about imagining what it is that you want to do with your life. And I mean, think about how important it is to to figure out for yourself where you want to end up and think about how little time we all spend doing that. Instead, we tend to just kind of, you know, float wherever the the tides of life take us. But when you can really start to be master of your own ship, uh, there's no limit to what you can do. John mentioned it in that clip, but he has some exercises in the book that will help you begin identifying those dreams in your life or some exercises just to help you uh, learn what it means to dream, to start dreaming, to start using your imagination about where life might be able to take you uh, if you're in the right frame of mind. So get that book. Again, uh, it's available on our website. It's called Mind Hacking, How to Change Your Mind for Good in 21 Days. There's a banner ad on the right-hand side of the page when you go to the website. Click on that, and it'll take you to John's uh, Amazon page. Uh, I'm very grateful for Sir uh, Sir John Hargrave joining me uh, over the last several episodes. Go back and listen to them in their entirety. Uh, These clips don't do justice, all the great information that John had for us. So, again, it's uh, episodes 371 through 374 here on the One Simple Thing podcast. As always, if you have thoughts, questions, comments about what you hear, you are welcome to email me. I check and respond to all my own emails. You can email me at dave at onesimplethingonline.com. That's with the number one in there, dave at onesimplethingonline.com. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you want to leave us a rating and review on the show, I'd appreciate that. It's a great way for you to give back. Uh, you can do that through the website. Just go to one simple thing online.com in the top menu. You will see support the show. Click on that. It will take you to a page with all the links you need. So I'd appreciate that as well. Thank you for listening today. Hopefully you got something out of the show and I'll be back with you next time with a brand new guest here on the one simple thing podcast. 